My name is Chris Gaughan. I'm a director of uh, strategy at Apprenda. And today I'm going to show you uh, the Kismatic Enterprise Toolkit. It's actually an incredible easy way to install Kubernetes on any infrastructure. It's open source, so you could go to the GitHub and uh, download it and try it out today. Uh, it's actually so easy that they sent a marketing guy to actually give a live demo in front of uh, the keynote. So to jump right into it, uh, Kismatic works on any public cloud or any private cloud or any infrastructure uh, that you have from VMware to AWS to Packet. Uh, we tested it all. It has global 24-7, 365 support that is available uh, if you choose to, to purchase that. It's also an installation that uh, is rule-based and has smoke testing. We'll see that during the demo, but we check that the actual cluster is up and running and that the infrastructure is ready to go before we even install that. Uh, it has built-in integrations. Uh, we uh, chose to, uh, to treat uh, Calico as a first-class citizen. Uh, for our installation, uh, it is a world-class SDN solution. So that control plane you'll have automatically when you install Kismatic. And Linkerd is another uh, primary partner for us as well. It's also operating system agnostic. You could use any operating system. And this is incredibly important to us because most of our customers and most of the people that we interact with are global 2,000 organizations. And they not only have their standard operating system, but they have a standard image that they use for that operating system. So they, they need to make sure that Kubernetes is working on that, that image. To jump right into uh, the stages of Kismatic and uh, I'll show you the GitHub in a second. But the first stage is actually the planning. This is uh, planning in the sense that you're meeting with your Kubernetes team and deciding what type of cluster do you need. Is it just something that's simple as far as, uh, you know, Minikube-like, or is it something where you actually need a production uh, uh, example of Kubernetes? And if you go to the GitHub, you'll see all the documentation. Do you see it live up there? Yes. So you'll see we have examples of the Minikube style. You'll have the developer cluster. You'll have the Skunks Works cluster. So you know one developer, I guess his emo band was not working out, and now he needs a Kubernetes cluster. Everything to a production full cluster on, again, any cloud. The next stage is provisioning, and we'll see that. But what, I, what I'm talking about uh, in terms of provisioning is actually provisioning the infrastructure, giving us the nodes and the IPs. And we'll see that during the demo. Uh, the next stages are the, the parts that you'll use the uh, Kismatic Enterprise Toolkit for, which is the validation, making sure that all the infrastructure is there and is ready to go, and then applying this plan that you set up uh, to install Kubernetes and doing the installation and smoke testing it. So with that, let's just jump into the command line again. So uh, if I was doing this from scratch, I would just go to, a, for, uh, I would uh, highly encourage everybody to go to github.com Apprenda Kismatic. You could see actually the two uh, packages there that you could install. I already have them installed, so I'll just show you uh, the command line. So you'll see, uh, as we saw in the diagram, there's plan, apply, validate. There's also add a worker node. Uh, that's something I didn't talk about. That's actually after you already have an installation. Uh, but it follows that, that uh, guidance that we gave you in the documentation. Uh, just to show you uh, what it means to plan, so install plan. So it's going to ask you how many etcd nodes you need. I'm going to put three because that's the suggestions for uh, a highly available production cluster. It's going to ask me how many master nodes I need. I say two. It's going to ask me how many worker nodes I, I need. I've already set up the infrastructure, so I know I have two worker nodes that I set up because I didn't want to spend a million dollars. And it's telling me my plan is uh, now in a YAML file. So just going to show you the infrastructure, I have a plan, so I'd have to go and set up the infrastructure, which I did before the demo. And there's nothing special that I did here, right? I just set up uh, some, some nodes, three instances. They're just micro instances in AWS. I just called them, named them etcd1, etcd2, etcd3. I have an installer node. You can see I'm on a Windows laptop, so I need to you know, SSH into something. I have uh, two master nodes and then the two worker nodes that I, I mentioned. 
Uh, because it's AWS, I also had to set up all the, the networking. So I set up a VPC, I set up the subnets, the route table, an internet gateway so that I could get into the, to the dashboard as well. So, you know, nothing fancy. Uh, the only other thing that you maybe want to do is uh, set up a load balancer uh, in AWS. It's somewhere down there, yeah, the load balancer, and attach it to the master nodes. I'm just pointing to the IP of the master nodes. We'll see in a second, uh, just as so I didn't have to set that up. So let's just take a look at the YAML file. So this is what it looks like. Again, it's nothing, uh, uh, you know, not intuitive. You're going to put your private IP addresses. You're going to put your private DNS ad addresses of the infrastructure that you set up for your etcd nodes. You're going to do the same for your master nodes. Uh, for the load balancer, since I'm pointing to the master nodes, I just put the IP addresses that. Uh, so this is something that you'll fill in. You'll see this. Uh, I actually have one saved. But you'd fill in all this information. You'd also fill it in for the worker nodes. Uh, we've tested it up to 100 and, uh, or more worker nodes. So you, know, you could see that if you were doing this by hand, it would be tedious for 100. So we have scripts that you know, are, would uh, help with this process. So just close that. Uh, let me just copy the one that I have saved. Do, do, do. So let me just show you again. Actually, let me just go up. So you can see I just put in all the IP addresses. Again, uh, nothing fancy. And then now that I have my plan, I'm actually going to do my uh, installation of Kubernetes. I'm going to apply my plan. I'm also going to skip something called pre-flight, and I'll explain why I'm doing that. Ah. I was going to try to get the right font so that it all fits on one screen. So if I go up, there's actually some pre-flight checks that it's doing. Uh, what it's doing in pre-flight is checking the infrastructure to make sure that it's correct, that it has the ports open, that it has the IP addresses that you put, that you put into the YAML file or are actually there. And that the packages, so the RPM or the dev packages that uh, are needed to install Kubernetes are there. Uh, we did this specifically because a lot of uh, enterprise and Fortune 500 customers are wanting to install Kubernetes behind the firewall. So they won't necessarily have internet connection. So we wanted to make uh, Kismetic Enterprise Toolkit uh, a, a way to install Kubernetes where you didn't even need internet. The next thing it's doing is it's uh, creating all the, the certs for us. You could actually feed your own certs. Of, of many large organizations would have those, and they would put those in. But since I don't, I you know, have it do it for me. Uh, it's then getting all the packages for Kismatic. It is uh, setting up the etcd clusters on the different nodes. It's setting actually two etcd clusters on each node. One is for Calico, which requires a different version than the uh, Kubernetes, the current version of Kubernetes. So it's actually setting up two on both. It's then installing all the different components of Kubernetes. You could see the control manager and all the kubelets being installed. And then finally, it's running some smoke tests. So what we're doing with smoke tests is that it is uh, uh, launching a Nginx server and also a BusyBox server and making sure that they could talk to each other that, to make sure that the cluster is working. So it's going through the first two smoke tests and it should be done in two seconds. One, two. It'll definitely work. There we go. So now, uh, as a final output, it actually gives me a connection or the URL for the dashboard, which is, if you haven't seen the dashboard yet, it is the open source uh, official Kubernetes UI. Uh, I would highly suggest taking a look. And let me just get the IP of one of these master nodes so that we could all see that the Kubernetes cluster is up and running. So there we go. We have the Kubernetes dashboard. You can see when I click nodes that all my nodes are up and running that I put in uh, AWS. And then I also, you know, previous to this, actually launched an application. Uh, so you could actually see an application. If I go to services, it's the actual guest book. 
uh, sample app that is often launched to Kubernetes. I'm not going to open it now because I only have five minutes and another 15 seconds. Uh, with that, um, again, check out the, check out the GitHub, uh, github.com slash apprenda slash Kismatic. It's open source. And again, check out the GitHub. And if you want any more information on Kismatic Enterprise Toolkit, check it out at apprenda.com uh, slash Kismatic. Thank you. Boom.